Good morning. I just want to say it's, a, it's an honor to be a part of the Boston Global Forum here, and I want to extend a special thanks to Governor Dukakis, uh, Tuan, uh, Professor Patterson, and all of the faculty and staff here at um, Harvard, MIT, and Boston University, and the other universities that are part of uh, the Boston Global Forum to make it a, a huge success. Um, today, uh, we're talking about a, a very serious global problem uh, that affects everybody in this room. And it requires global thinkers and thought leaders around the world to come together to address. Um, a couple of statistics that I have, I'm echoing a number of sentiments um, uh, and comments that were made earlier. Um, Cybercrime costs the global economy an estimated $400 billion a year in loss. The digital revolution is transforming our society and the Internet of Things is, is about to redefine it. Nearly 73% of businesses rank cybersecurity as their number one risk moving into the new fiscal year. Almost 70% 70 70 of cyber attacks are financially motivated, which means that the hackers are out to steal your data for profit. The biggest mover amongst these at 14% moving up from 7% is cyber espionage. Sophisticated hackers are cons uh, consistently finding ways inside networks looking to destroy, disrupt, and steal information for financial gain. State-sponsored cyber attacks are reaching an all-time high, penetrating high-value government agencies and critical infrastructure institutions vital to our economy and growth. The cost of getting it wrong is too high. <coughs> Some may argue the fact, but we are in the middle of a cyber arms race, a cyber cold war that is reaching epic proportions. Uh, being a cybersecurity consultant today, uh, I'm on the front lines of, of these types of cyber attacks, and I've seen these um, attacks, and, and they are very sophisticated and they are very lethal. So how can we address this problem? Uh, how can we send the message? and bring key stakeholders around the world to define an ethical code of conduct, rules of engagement, and create a form of cyber peace among nation states. Through the Boston Global Forum, I'm proposing an action plan to build a cyber threat index that will begin to collect known cyber threats and attacks from around the world and create a summary, a summary report and threat index to demonstrate the veracity and global impact of these threats. This is something that I think is very key, uh, that we need to bridge the gap between technology and technologists and legislation and the leaders uh, that make policy. One of the key benefits of this index will be to compile the data and suggest policy for the development of an ethical code of conduct, which can be taken to legislators around the world to help define it. Cybersecurity education and awareness serves as a major weapon in understanding the current cyber threat landscape. I want to read a, a short excerpt from uh, China's president while visiting the United States on the West Coast at Microsoft this week. China is a staunch defender of cybersecurity. <laughs> it is also a victim of hacking. Yeah. The Chinese government will not, in whatever form, engage in commercial thefts or encourage or support such attempts by anyone. Both commercial cyber theft and hacking against government networks are crimes that must be punished in accordance with law and relevant international treaties. The international community should, on a basis of mutual respect and mutual trust, work together to build a peaceful, secure, open, and cooperative cyberspace. China is ready to set up a high-level joint dialogue mechanism with the United States on fighting cyber crimes. Now, some may speculate that excerpt, that soundbite, uh, and it may be an idealistic comment. And I share some of the sentiments from our colleagues from Japan uh, mm -hmm. as far as how serious and how true they are regarding that sta those statements. But if what the Chinese president has said to be true is true, then I believe we've taken a giant step forward in mutually identifying a problem that can be solved through open communication 
and mutual respect for others, technical prowess, values, and an economic way of life. Setting an example between the United States and China on this critical initiative would hopefully bring other countries to come to the table with the same expectations in creating an ethical code of conduct for cyber peace and security around the world. Thank you. Thank you.